One of the most asked questions on solar technologies we get is which is the best product. In this video, we will use two competing existing installations and their data for the last four years and even see how they performed in winter. But some basics first. The renewable energy industry is similar to buying a car. You wouldn't expect high performance from a cheap car and you wouldn't expect a high performance car to be cheap. So let's look at what a solar panel is. It's a rectangular framed glass product filled with multiple small semiconductors, each about the size of a bathroom tile, and the whole panel goes on your roof ground or wall and harvests energy. This energy is converted into electricity, which you, you can use for free in your own home or building for the next 30 to 40 years. They come in different sizes, colors, and performance outputs, and some of them even make heat as well as electricity. In the market, you will hear things like, this panel has the highest efficiency or the biggest wattage. These are typical sales statements, However, historical performance data is the only proof of performance. So back to the which panel is best question. There are ways you can determine this by using a few rules of thumb, and we're going to show you them here. We're going to use the data from two systems. One a home system that harvests daylight instead of sunlight, and the other is the leading solar PV product, which harvests sunlight. So we're now going to create two reports. We're going to model up two reports, and you can do this for your own projects. It's quite easy to do. We're going to use the Global Solar Atlas. GlobalSolarAtlas.info is the website. It's free of charge. And we'll show you how it works. So if you're thinking about a project, you can use this, whether it's uh, residential or commercial or industrial. We're going to zoom in in Ireland. This is where we're going to compare. We're comparing the two systems. They're approximately here in Galway. And you can see we've got different systems we can choose. We're going to choose small residential and we're going to change it to the correct size this is the home system that we're going to check all of the data against we can open the detail and i'm going to click a report pdf and with this you can see all the data is automatically generated using weather data and everything from your and the radiation data from your loca exact location and then it produces a predicted output for the system in question, which is 1788 kilowatt hours per year. It's showing here as megawatt hours, uh, just multiplied by a thousand. And of course that's for a two kilowatt system. So you divide this by two to get the output per kilowatt peak installed. We're now going to go and model the second system. This is the standard solar PV system. We're going to compare it against. It's actually bigger. And the same settings are correct for that also. And we can see uh, all the data for this as well. Obviously, it's 4,586 kilowatt hours or 4.586 megawatt hours as it's being shown. And of course, that's bigger because the system is itself bigger. And we're also going to download that report. So we're going to use both these reports as the models as if we were going to do the project but in both these cases these projects are already running about four years so we'd be able to take the models and then look at the last four years data and see did they do what they were supposed to do um, and this is a really great exercise um, and really the only evidence of whether a system performs or not it's pure data and the kilowatt hours and that it outputs Looking at the sun seeker data for this location, this is the longest day of the year in June. You can see that we have quite a wide spread and 60 degrees height in terms of inbound light. And then we move back to the shortest day of the year, January, or sorry, in December uh, for this location. And uh, we can see how much energy tracks back. The height, the maximum height at midday is 13 degrees from the horizontal and only several hours of actual light. And you can see in the in the data graph here, we have 17 hours of daylight duration and the longest day of the year, and we have seven hours, 31 minutes on the shortest day of the year. Um, we also need to remember that these installations are in the west of Ireland, so they have the lowest kind of energy levels uh, in the country. And as you move away, you get much higher outputs and performance. We've had to manually collate all the data on the 5.13 kilowatt solar PV system 
um, which is unfortunate. It's taken a lot of time, but we've got that data now assembled. And we're going to first look at the annual performance of both these systems. The home system comes with a full data management suite as standard, so we can see all the data for this system instantaneously, as can the customers and this particular customer and any customer of any of our systems. Here we have the first pass at data and we're going to do the annual data first. So here we have the 5.13 solar PV system and on the right we have the home 2 kilowatt system. We're going to block out the brand of the solar PV system, but it is actually one of the top brands in the market, one of the top three in the solar PV side. In 2022, the solar PV system did 4,338 kilowatt hours and the model value was 4,586. So it underperformed the model um, at 94.6%. So it had a shortfall of 5.4%. In 2021, it produced 4,282 kilowatt hours, which meant it met 93.3% of the model and had a shortfall of 6.7%. In 2020, it produced 4,219.3 and that was 91.9% and under shortfall of 8.1% of the model. For the annual consumption per kilowatt peak installed, we divide the size of the system into the total production. We get 845 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak installed for 2022, 834 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak installed for 2021 and 822 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak for 2020. 2019 both these systems were installed so they're part years and 2023 is still a part year as it's underway so we've excluded that data. On the home system we have a fully automated platform of data with real-time second-by-second information so we didn't need to go to spreadsheets to correlate the annual data it was just easily available. So in 2022, the home system did 2045 kilowatt hours for the year against the model of 1788. So it actually delivered 114% of the model. So an overproduction of 14%. In 2021, it did 1898. That was 106% of the model. So it overproduced the model 6%. And in 2020, did 1918 and overproduced uh, 107% uh, of the model against the model, so overproduced 7%. So the kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak, and now you're starting to see a huge difference, was 1,022 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak in 2022, 949 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak in 2021, and 959 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak in 2020. That's a big difference between the two systems in terms of performance. So now we're going to look at what this means annually between the two systems. So if you focus on the red box at the bottom left, it means that the solar PV system underperformed against the model. In 2022 by minus 5.4%, by in 2021 by minus 6.7%, and in 2020 by minus 8.10% against the model. The home system in 2022 outperformed the model by 14% in 2021 by 6% and 2020 7%. When you take this difference and you add them together, that means the home advantage per kilowatt peak installed in terms of performance in 2022 was nearly 20% better performance. You spread that over 20 to 30 to 40 years of operation, that is absolutely massive. In 2021, that was 12.7%. Again, massive numbers when you spread it over 30 to 40 years. And 15.1% in 2020. Again, an enormous difference in performance when you spread it over 30 to 40 years. Now we're just going to look at the difference in that performance um, would make, if you had the solar PV system, how much would you be losing out? So we know the average difference we've taken the average over the three years is 143 kilowatt hours less on the solar pv system per kilowatt peak installed so if you had a six kilowatt installation that'd be 858 kilowatt hours lost or less per year 
and on 11 kilowatt that'll be 1573 kilowatt hours less per year if you add those systems up and take a 30 year window then you'd lose out on 25,740 kilowatt hours over that period on a 6 kilowatt and 47,190 on an 11 kilowatt turning that into money using today's electricity price average electricity price and assuming that electricity never goes up for the next 30 years which of course it will then it would you would be losing out on 11,325 euros worth of electricity on the 6 kilowatt and 20,000 euros 763 on the 11 kilowatt to put some numbers on the data so the first rule of thumb is seek historical evidence of what the output per kilowatt peak is and that's the amount of kilowatt hours that every kilowatt of installation will generate annually and it will vary from region to region this is west of ireland data so this will be, should be the lowest uh, in, in the country that's your first rule of thumb next we're going to break down that annual performance into months and especially winter we're going to focus on winter and if you're into home battery charging or battery charging in general um, or ev charging and um, then this whole winter uh, and this whole annual breakout is going to be very very interesting for you so now we're going to discuss the second rule of thumb we've got all the monthly data um, for both systems for 2022 we're now interested in looking at what winter performance is. You can already see looking at the graphs that the home system has a much flatter production uh, performance across the months than the standard solar PV system does. And of course, most people are familiar that solar PV crashes out in winter. On the left, we've got the month June with the longest day. And on the right, we've got December, the month with the shortest day. And this is the second rule of thumb. We wanna see what percentage output happens in December versus June. We have the date at the bottom, um, obviously these systems are different sizes, but 215 kilowatt hours versus 83 is 38.4%. So the home system produced nearly 40% of the summer output in December. On the other system, we have 590 in June and 46 in December. That means December was only 7.7% .7 of the June output. I mean, that's quite a big difference. It's five times the difference. The home system was able to produce per kilowatt installed five times more kilowatt hours in December than the standard solar PV system. And ironically, this is a 5.13 kilowatt system. We're comparing it to a two kilowatt home system. And if you look at December, the home system did 83 kilowatt hours versus 46, nearly twice the amount of kilowatt hours in December. And this solar PV system is two and a half times bigger than the home system itself. So that kind of says it all. This is your second rule of thumb. You want to see these comparisons, December versus June data from existing systems. So where does all this enhanced performance come from? It comes from the pyramidic structures that, that make up the semiconductor units within the panels themselves. These are designed to collect daylight rather than sunlight. The surface area of a square meter of these pyramidic structures is three and a half square meters per square meter of panel area. So it's got a large collector array. This is where you get the huge performance in off light conditions and in winter. We obviously have lots of different panels for different environments, whether it's solar farms all the way down, but in the built environment, our dense energy three-dimensional semiconductors are the highest performing panels out on the market currently. And that's data led, um, not any other reason. And you're not just talking about panels. This is a 30 to 40 year installation window. So your inverters should be coming with minimum 15 year warranties, if not 20 year warranties. The same goes for your mounting systems. They should be aluminium, they should be all protective coated, and also they should be strong enough for the environment they're being put in. Ireland and Scotland are class one wind environments, the most ferocious wind environments that exist. So everything needs to be capable of lasting a 30 to 40 year window. You can get lots more information on our website, case studies, facts, um, go to technical information, residential information, commercial, um, and lots of different products and applications.